I have finally got my hands on the Aegis Scepter after so long, and my first thoughts on the weapon is, I can finally cosplay as Mr. Freeze from Batman now. Which sounds silly at first, but with stasis and how paranoid players get with it in PvP, I can make a few exceptions to being a villain. Anywho, today's build won't be focused on PvP, thank god, but actually much better. Remember when Bleak Watches was first introduced and how powerful they were in simplifying all content from there onwards? Well, today we'll be revisiting that again, but newly updated with some fancy new mods and weapons to boot. Let me tell you, you can keep firing and throwing stasis turrets down one after another, like Oprah Winfrey, every Saturday morning, and it just makes games so much easier for all. In fact, you can take this into Grand Masters, for example, and as long as you have a team who knows how to do 2 plus 2, you can easily cover their backs from start all the way to a finish, but only if they have a brain, of course. If this is making you feel tingly all over, then you're probably not a core doctor for that. If not, stick on by and let me share my knowledge with you. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, we'll be using Shade Binder with the exotic of choice being Variety Brow. To fully utilize the ability and get them up as quickly as possible, we will need to enhance our grenade regen speed greatly to get the benefits rolling. For this, we have the Variety's Brow Exotic, which increases our grenade damage up to times 5 but also increases the grenade energy rate at the same time as long as we're using a secondary weapon to support this. Now, grenade damage means jack for us as they can't outright kill a target unless they are already weak. The extra grenade bonus though is where it's at and when combined with Aegis Scepter, we can easily get it up to times 5 within a few seconds and benefit from the grenade energy as we go along. This also offers us a secondary effect where upon throwing a grenade, nearby allies will also benefit as well with an increased grenade regen for a short time. This can be handy for other players who need to heavily rely on their grenades as well just to get through. This though won't be enough and this is where the fragments will come in to further support our stats and other abilities as well. From here, I've chosen to use Whispers of Torments where we'll get grenade energy every time we get damage, which for endgame will be constantly. Whispers of Shards that will boost our grenade regen upon shattering combatants. Whispers of Fissures will increase shatter damage and Whispers of Change will reduce incoming damage at all angles, which is very useful for the hardest content around. You can also swap out one of the fragments for Whispers of Durance instead for longer ability effects if you wish, but this will only be handy if you know you need that extra time to plan out what to do next. We do have additional mods to help out the grenade energy flow as well, so at this rate you really can't complain of lack of grenade energy coming your way. For weapons, Aegis Scepter will be your main and true weapon you'll be relying on the most because of its synergy with Stasis and the artifact themselves. Truth be told, a lot of the carrying for the build will be linked between you using Aegis to freeze and shatter targets and then building up Variety's Brow Death Throws perk to max to then proceed with carpet bombing an area with Stasis turrets. And thanks to this weapon actually being useful and viable, it allows the creation of turrets so much more easier than before, where using anything else may have worked but lacked the synergy needed to make it better. As a weapon stasis, I can put on a mod such as the Elemental Armors mod to produce wells upon combatant's death which will yield me more energy as I go along. This is important as other weapons that are stasis or have stasis parts can do the same as well but not as efficiently compared to the stasis laser beam itself. In total, Aegis has finally made doing a full stasis build viable as the lack of good stasis weapons did hamper the playstyle a bit for most players. For a secondary, I'm using the Tyranny of Heaven Bow with Sneak Bow and Dragon for Life for perks. The point of the bow, no pun intended, is to allow me a great way to shatter multiple combatants when I don't have anything else available to do so. Now you may be thinking, why not use a grenade launch instead, which you're right, it would make a difference. But I chose to use a bow to cover my overload options in most in-game activities, as although I can slow them down, it won't fully stop them for good at times, so I need a spare weapon to shatter them. You don't need to go for the same bow as shown as the bow can only be gotten from a raid which may be a bit much for some of you, but instead you can always try the Wolf Tone Draw or Imperial Needle instead which offer the near same rolls and can cover the different types of elemental shields you'll face, plus they are easy to farm as well. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Reed Regret with Quick Draw and Vorpal which is going to be extremely handy when up against champions and bosses alike. Ideally, you want to have a weapon in this slot that has Vorpal for that extra boss damage DPS especially for Grandmaster level content. With my weapon, it offers me two things that I can exploit. Firstly, I can apply the Parkour Deconstruction mod for a 40% debuff on bosses to mini bosses applied, which will make my pigeon hits even more stronger than normal. And secondly, as a stasis weapon, it will be benefiting from my subclass and mods to use, so we can keep our abilities afloat as need be. 
All of this on the heavy weapon makes taking on encounters a lot more easier when you know that you can do multiple things at once when you don't want to use your super or other weaponry to help. Of course, if you don't have this weapon, you can always use another linear instead of your choosing. You're not really limited in this area here. As long as the weapon's got a full pool, you should be good. Within your stats, you want to focus as much ammo support towards your discipline so you can easily maintain your status towards at all time. Although we have the artifacts and the exotic that will help you in this area, passively we want to always have ammo for acres to help produce towards faster, so it's always wise to maximize the following stat just in case. For this, I've aimed for 70 as this will fill the needed area as we passively go along. From here, you then want to have the grenade kickstart mod and innovation mod to help secure your grenades as you casually play. For extra support for you and your team, we also have the Bounty for a while mod times 2 which will grant us more energy to our lowest stat as we net steady kills. This alongside the Elemental Armors mod will allow weapons such as Agars and Reeds to produce wells on kills which will greatly help us with speeding up our ability regeneration without needing to go our hunter stat to make a simple difference. Lastly, we do have a super which we will be using quite a lot throughout our battles so it will be wise to spec into it at a reasonable level but not too much. For this, 5060 is a good spot to aim for since we have teammates who can support us further in this area. And then, having mods such as Frontal Wisdom for its passive super regeneration and Hands On for super energy on many kills should be all you'll need, although having a few intellect mods can also help if needed. Please note though, the Hands On mod is 50-50 to use with Warlock status as sometimes it will work and other times it won't work as the melee needs to kill for it to trigger. Now the Warlock's melee stasis tends to freeze rather than outright kill, so don't be surprised if you don't get anything out of this, and if that's the case, it's always great to go ahead and take this mod off just to spare some space. Left over wise, we have the Trace Rifle Scavenger and Ammo Finder mod, which you will need as you will burn through ammo quickly, which I wish I was joking when I say that, and then of course we have the Parkour Deconstruction mod for that sweet sweet debuff application. This is everything you'll need to ultimately carry you for the season and probably next season as well. Now as I've covered the mods, weapons and perks we are using, here's what it's like all compiled. For our head we have Discipline, Trace Rifle, Ammo Finder, Hands On and Bountiful Well mod. Arm we have Maya Discipline, Grenade Kickstart, Overload Bow and Bondal Wisdom mod. Chest we have Discipline, Picker Stamina Times 2 and Bountiful Well mod. Leg with Minor Intellect, Innovation, Trace Rifle Scavenger and Elemental Armors mod. Bond with Discipline and Parkour Deconstruction mod. Now if you ever want to have an army of status turrets on your side and watch a overload captain suffer in the worst way possible, then this build will truly give you that satisfaction. We can do a lot more compared to what we did in the past thanks to Aegis and status gear equipped it. And from here we can immensely slow down the most fastest combatants around without pulling a sweat. This is going to be very handy for endgame content where things from all angles inside will be hurting you in the worst way possible. Unlike last time, we heavily relied on the firepower mod and varieties to get the job done, and although that still offered us the near same uptime that we currently got here, it seems like this version feels more weightful in terms of how everything works in one. You have weapons that fit the subclass and mods being used, which offer a noticeable synergy between how everything will be working the moment you activate certain skills or use weapons, etc. This wasn't so much there for the old version, as we had to make do with a swordsman of weapons that didn't interact so well with the subclass or mods at the time being used. I found great success with the build in content where you face a wave upon waves of combatants charging at you, like that one bridge scene from Demon Boy Orion. And if you haven't watched that movie, please for the love of God go watch it. Unlike the movie's outcome, we're from the future and space magic rules, nonetheless. And from here, all we need to do is just get a single kill via our Aegis and this would trigger a chain reaction of freezing combatants and also build up grenade energy rapidly for our mods, subclass and exotic. If we can consistently get a kill after a kill, we can easily chuck down 3 to even 4 turrets at once and pretty much prevent anyone from getting close to us. And all of this will also be yielding you elemental worlds times 2 for most kills you get, so you're not only supporting your team via the turrets, but you're also helping them via other means as well. It's like becoming Elsa from Frozen, except she can't die and she's now a stone cold killer against the many gods we face. It's honestly surprising not to see many people use the Aegis so efficiently in in-game content, as it's great when paired with status now, although it has its limits, which is of course, is easy to drain ammo. 
I can also see this being useful, um, not so useful in content such as master content, where certain setups will be required. On one hand, with the amount of turrets around, I can easily stop most encounters and allow my team to safely navigate around the toughest combatants around without fear of being one-shotted. On the other hand, this will depend on the combatants you face, and if you have an effective team, who knows what they are doing. I could go on and on as to how amazing the build is and what content, but then this video will be at least an hour long. But once you get into the build and try it out, you'll see where I'm coming from as the status tours for all content pretty much trivializes them for all players. I haven't even touched the catalyst for the weapon yet, but that's for another day. Anyways, get this build together, try it out, and like Sun Tzu once said, let us know. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.